சாபகவட்டோ அரஹட்டோ சம்மா சம்போடசோடசோ அரஹட்டோ சம்மா சம்போடச நமோடசோ அரஹட்டோ சம்மா சம்போடச ராப்தானு அவிவன் to this slide <coughs> let's we will talk about uh, three type of orally and usandi right our uh, previous week so today we want to talk about another one which is connected with the uh, bodily actions uh taking in toxicants just like uh, drinking and using drugs etc right we just talk about less thirsty <laughs> less thirsty right here sura media majja pamada thana this is from five precept right for those who are taking five precept uh we uh you have to observe this one um the good body translate as a indulge in liquor wine and intoxicants so the basis for heedlessness here is very important one here i highlight pamata tan right uh the basis for heedlessness so if you are using liquor wine or any type of intoxicants just like a drugs opium opiates then uh you will lot you are heed uh you are mindfulness right you will lot your consciousness you will not know what to do right what you are doing so for that reason uh sura media taking intoxicant is very important right the reason is this is a, the basis for heedlessness yet all type of intoxicant such as drug opium alcohol etc can also be added into sura media right sura media so there are many drugs many type of drugs right uh that will, that that will make you um lost your consciousness lost your mindfulness right so all these are called all these are under uh sura media much of maratana so of course what we know is drinking alcohol right only this only a part of this one uh there are many type of intoxicants as well right many people uh uh give a lame excuse drinking wine right <laughs> like drinking wine as it whether you are socially or whether you like it i think no exception no uh, how to say that there's no no excuse right no excuse so all these are all these will make you uh intoxicated and lost your mindfulness right for that reason uh this is very important so this is a connected with the body with your body right sura media is not mentioned in the uh as the cause of and whose and karma not mentioned and not stated as the cause of and whose and karma so we are learning ten causes of and whose and actions right but uh sura media is not mentioned not stated as the the cause of anho sankama akusala kamapata 
Surprisingly, it is also not found in Brahmajala soda and Samanyafala sodas where many type of silas are mentioned, right? So that me uh, not only is not stated as the causes of Anhu Sangama, but also it's not stated in the Sila Kanda Vakapali, uh, just, just like Brahma Jala Soda and Samyapala Soda, right? Not stated. That is just for knowledge, right? It's not, not an excuse, right? Because some scholars, they, they want to take a skew. This is a very big deal, right? Actually, it's not. It's not. There are many, many places that the Buddha talk. Sura Media, Majapamaratana, right? Especially in Gautra Nikaya, many places, right? Many places. Having the same nature, Sura Media is added into Kamisu Mechachara, by the sub-commentators, right? Sub-commentators. Vibhavini Tiga is a commentary of this one, Abhidhamada Sangha, commentary of Abhidhamada Sangha, right? So in this sub-commentary, it's mentioned that uh, Sura Media is added, counted as the Gamisume Chachara because they have the same nature, the same characteristics, right? Both of them are indulging oneself or practicing wrongly in sensual relations. So when you are indulging in sexual misconduct, so that means by touch, right? By <coughs> touching your body. So if you're drinking alcohol, so if you're drinking wine, if you're using drugs, right? Intoxicants, so you are indulging in sensual pleasure is in a wrong way by way of taste, right? By tasting. But if you are taking ingestion, drug, right? It is by way of touch, right? By way of touch. So actually they have the same nature. The nature is indulging oneself in a wrong way in sensual pleasures, right? Indulging one's in sensual pleasures in the wrong way, right? Wrong way. For that reason, uh, Sura Media is added into Kamisume uh, Chachara, um, right? Kamisume Chachara, the literal meaning of Kamisume Chachara is um, practicing wrongly in, in sensual pleasures, right? In sensual pleasures. For that reason, uh, even uh, husband and wife, right? If a wife doesn't want, right? Then uh, the husband forced to do it. We can call it it is a sexual misconduct, right? We can we can even interpret in this way, but it's not stated in the sodas. But if we take it, uh, if we understand, uh, if we interpret uh, practicing and indulging in sexual pleasure in the wrong way, so that me, the wife, does not want, right? Then the husband forced to do it. And vice, vice versa, right? The husband doesn't want, right? Then the wife forced to do it. We can also consider as the Kamisu uh, Major um, Chara, right? Sexual misconduct. But it actually it's not it's not mentioned anywhere. <laughs> just for the uh, just for the discussion, right? Discussions. Okay. Uh, what you, what you mentioned just now was that if one party refused yeah. to take the other, uh, in the law in most countries. Because also rape. Wow, okay, yes, very good. Beautiful, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Maybe it is a type of rape, right? right. Because it, we are uh, sexual misconduct, right? Misbehavior, sexually 
misbehavior, not a TK one, right? But of course, in the uh, in the soda, just uh, how to say it, uh, having uh, having sexual affairs outside of marriage, right? Outside of marriage. Okay. Regarding with the uh, drinking liquor and wine, so we have a one. Uh, uh so that said that drinking liquor and wine rapidly pursued develop and cultivated is conducive to awful planes. Here I think that is very important. Rapidly pursued, right? If you drink for some time it's okay. <laughs> Should be okay, but of course it it is considered as the unwholesome actions, but of course, um, only if you are doing all the time, many times, right? It became your habit. If you cannot, if you cannot stand, right? So just want to drink, 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 right? In such cases, it will be conducive to awful planes, right? Awful planes. If you are drinking for some time because because uh, because some conditions, right? It may not it may not be uh, conducive to hopeful planes. For one who was born as a human being, drinking liquor and wine at minimum minimum conduce to madness, right? So, but of course, even even in this life. Some people became crazy because of drinking alcohol too much, right? Too much. In our village, uh, there is one one guy who always drink. Uh, in the morning, he try hard. Uh, he is working for other people, other family. That he have send small amount of money, and he use all money for drinking. Night time, he always he always singing song, <laughs> and especially the children afraid of him. If the children is misbehaving, uh, the parents normally are uh, threatened by using his name <laughs> <laughs> because he's very fearful uh, and frightening for the children. Of course, even the even the adept, you know, he is very. Uh, Drunkard and sometimes shouting. Mostly he's uh, singing song, going around the village and singing song. But now he no long he he died he died because of because of the drinking drinking alcohol. A sad story. Stay remember. Stay can visualize his his image. He is a how to say drunkard. He like it. Added to it, right? Added to it. Very pitiful. He does not know what he is doing. The other time is very good. In the morning, he try hard. He is doing his business, uh, his job. Uh, after drinking the in, in the evening, after drinking, he lost his consciousness and mindfulness. He will do whatever you know. He will not think whether it is wrong or right, right? So and then became like a mad and crazy, right? Like a crazy. So at minimum, it conduces to madness. Okay. Uh, what did the current of drinking drinks? Uh, the person drink become alcoholic. He stop drinking because of the trouble symptom. His hand became shivered. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he has to drink to keep not remembering for all the time. They were contracted. He lost job or lost. Mm. How many times did he stop? I'm going to stop. You need to go and find people to drink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So these are problems for those. Yes, these are consequences. Bad consequences, right? Bad consequences. So this is another story. Interesting uh, story about alcohol. We can even call it the story of the beginning of alcohol. For those who want to know, you can read this Jataka, Gomba Jataka. Jatagano 512, right? So, in that Jataka, it is, uh, it is said to be, uh, it is said to be the beginning of 
uh, the beginning of uh, alcohol, right? In the Himalaya forest, there is a very big tree with the three branches. Then there is a hole. So all the rain pour in the hole. Then some branches, uh, some leaf, and some fruit uh, draw into the hole. Then some bud, they take a uh, rice from belly fee and they eat. But some of the some of the rice fall into the into the hole. So when um, the sun is very hot, so the water in the hole heat up. It became red. So sometime some bud very thirsty, so they go and drink that that water. And they they they, they, they became intoxicated and they 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 became drunk, eh? <laughs> drunk, and they fall on the ground. They fall on the ground. Then after some time, and they flew away. They fly. They fly away. So actually, uh, sand bud they added to that taste, and they come again. They drink, and became drunk. Then fall on the ground. Then after a few minutes, flying away. So they like it. They are added to that, right? One day, one day, a hunter saw that incident, right? It's happening. So, actually, after drinking water uh, from that hole, the bug fall on the ground. Then, uh, then the, after a while, flying, flying away. So, the hunters, uh, hunter uh, think that it, is, it, it, it may not be a poison, right? If it is a poison, they will die, right? So I went to taste it. That he tastes that uh, that water, and he became drunk. So he fall. Maybe he, of course he is not fall down on the ground. He cannot go anywhere, right? Then uh, later, after drinking that water, he became drunk, and he killed the bat on. Um, uh, on the ground, and he used it as a, uh, as a, what is it, the meat, right? As a meat. So, later, uh, he, he is very lazy to drink alone. For that reason, he go to, uh, he visit a one hermit living nearby, and drink together. And they, they became addicted to that water, right? So, Actually, it might be a very good taste for them. For that reason, they bring that water. So let's say it is a alcohol, it became alcohol, right? Alcohol. So the water is fermented with the hot, hot sand, right? Many fruit, many ingredients, including the bark or the trees, right? So they bring that water to the neighboring country and they give it to the king. And the king and all the citizens, they also added it to alcohol, right? The whole country corrupted. And they actually, uh, it became their business. For that reason, they go to another country called Saketa, and the whole country also corrupted again. Then go to another, another city, another, uh, another country is called Sabati. So they are almost destroying Sabati, but the king of Dawadensa, the king of Deva, Saka and Dawadensa came down and uh, used the advertising technique. Use, uh, showing disadvantages of the danger of drinking alcohol, right? Many verses in Jataka's story that I think are, are about 50 verses, right? So in those verses, uh, the king of Deva uh, talk about the danger of drinking alcohol. For someone who drink alcohol, then uh, they lost their consciousness and they even insult to their parents and they commit killing, such a misconduct, telling lies like this, right? So showing a lot of dangers and disadvantages of drinking alcohol, right? So actually here I just I just. Uh, 
I just want to show only one verse from Jataka, right? I think if you know this verse, I think uh, it will be clear. Having drank liquor, one commit ibadis by action, by speech, and by thought. Having committed ibadis, one go to hell, right? But of course, drinking alcohol for one or two times, it will not, it will not be a rebirth in hell, right? It will not produce. What I mean is the uh, repeatedly pursue, right? Doing again and again. So one go to hell. Buying this pot, fail with the liquor, right? Buying this pot, fail with the liquor. Actually, he is advertising. Actually, he bring a bottle, a bottle of uh, alcohol on his shoulder, and he is talking, selling the bottle of alcohol to the king. Buying this pot, fail with the liquor, fail, fail, uh, fail with the alcohol. But after drinking, you will go to hell. Right? So the king, after hearing that, the king afraid of that, right? Afraid of the danger of drinking alcohol and he, uh, how do you can say, drinking festival. So from the time over, the country became, uh, how do you say, the, uh, clear and also uh, prosperous, right? Prosperous. So I think this is a, a uh, a very a very good uh, Jataka story, right? So I think uh, you can you can you can find out in the library Jataka, uh, Jataka number five one two, right? Five one two. For those who want to know disadvantages of drinking alcohol, you can read this soda as well, Raja soda. In that soda, the Buddha talk about disadvantages of uh, danger of drinking alcohol after drinking. One way, uh, one way commit killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, telling lies, etc. Right? Etc. So this is a uh, Sura Media Majapamarata, right? The name of Hanta who discover alcohol is called Sura. For that reason, Sura Miriya, right? Miriya is another one. Sura. Sura is the one who discover, right? Uh, the alcohol. You know, the one who go to Mount Everest. His name is Mr. Everest, right? Everest. He gave the mountain as the Everest. Just like that. So alcohol is given as a Sura in Pali, right? Because he is the first one who discover Alcohol, right? Alcohol. According to according to this Jataka, right? Okay. Any question? Okay. Uh, please use my microphone. Okay. Uh, it's often currently what we're talking about uh, someone who continuously drinking alcohol. What about uh, why does he use cooking in our daily lives? Uh, most of the time, uh, they are used to enhance the taste. Yeah. As a mother, they might cook uh, food, using wine for the children, for the family. As a food itself, uh, if we go by the Kamisu Vichara, Vichara, sensual pleasure, yes, it's a food enhancer. But it doesn't teach one to uh, a stage of deadness. But as a Buddhist, should we discourage such practice? Very good question. Uh, yeah, very good and very relevant question. Uh, actually, we have to look at as you as you have said that we have to look at Pamadatana, the base of heatlessness, right? As long as it doesn't uh, cause heatlessness, it stay okay, it stay okay because it, you're using to enhance uh, the taste of the curry, right? But that curry, if that curry make you heatless, that is that is a counter as a Sura Media Machapamadatana, right? For that reason, I highlight the word Pamadatana, right? 
uh, the base of heatlessness. But some people might argue that sometimes we drink wine, you know, a very mild wine, just for the sushi, right? Um, but of course, those or oh, alcohol, wine, etc., right? So they are intoxicated. They will make you intoxicated. So it's very dangerous. But in those drinking, I think we can consider as a Sura media, Majapamaratana. But in the case of um, uh, putting uh, wine in the curry, but uh, if it doesn't exceed, right? If you put, uh, how do you say, a sem small amount, I think it's still acceptable. So as long as uh, it doesn't cause heatlessness, right? Heatlessness. Okay, question? Okay, let's go. The next one, four vowel actions. Wajikama. Page number uh, 206. <coughs> we have four five actions. Number one, telling line. Number two, slandering. Number three, hard speech. Number four, frivolous talk or idle talk. Simple blah blah. So these are called four five and hosa actions. Actually, all these foes are always associated with our daily life, right? Many people are using telling line. The majority of the people, right? They're using telling line, slandering, hard speech, popular talk. One way or another, we are using all these men, right? So I think uh, it's important to understand all these four, right? Four and wholesome variations. So we will study one by one. So these four are called the variations because they occur through the door of the speech, right? They generally occur here, yeah, generally, it's very important. Telling lines sometimes uh, will occur in the bodily door, right? So by using your body, sometimes you may tell lie. But it is still called variation because we are talking in general, right? Talking in general. So these as the, these actions can also be done by showing bodily catches. By using your body, we can do some uh, telling line or slandering or other things, right? Other things. But even in such cases, so they are still considered as a variations. Variations. So we are given the name uh, in general, right? Given the name in general. So don't don't argue this is a bodily or vave or main <laughs> So these are just for the convenience sake, right? In Abhidhamma we call it Samudhi Sacha. Conventional terms, right? Conventional terms. But actually, behind those uh, conventional terms, we have to look at uh, Lobato Samoha, right? Lobato Samoha. Generally, they are called as the five actions. Number one, telling line. Musabara. So we we'll look at uh, what the Buddha taught in the Sotas, right? I think that that is a, uh, the best way to understand telling line, right? Otherwise, uh, it will be misleading. In many so that the Buddha is playing the same, the same phrase, the same paragraph regarding with the telling line. And the Buddha said, here, someone speaks falsehood, telling line, right? What is not truth? What is not truth? If he is summoned to a council, to an assembly, to his relatives present, to his guide, or to the court. Actually, that means just showing the example, some of the example, right? 
wherever you are or whoever you are talking, right? Whoever you are talking, if you are asked as a witness, so good man, tell what you know. Then not knowing, he says, I know. Right? The Italian line, right? Not knowing, he says, I know. Right? So that's the Italian line. Or knowing, he says, I do not know. You know it, but you tell line, I do not know. Right? Actually, uh, we have been uh, using telling line very often. Right? <laughs> but at least that's a normal puto jana. So we have to reduce the amount of musavara, right? If you cannot reduce, you cannot be cancelled a banana, right? I think it's very important. Most of the people, they normally tell line. They normally tell line. But, so we have to reduce the amount of musavara. So then only we can a good Buddhist, right? Only Sotapanna, he will stop talking, telling line. Because he already removed the defilement, right? So that, uh, because of defilement, right? Because of greed, because of anger, because of uh, ignorance, we are telling line, right? Telling line. But as a uh, Sotapanna, he doesn't have such a uh, dangerous defilement in his mind. For that reason, even at the risk of his life, he will not tell a lie, right? He will not tell a lie. For that reason, um, okay. Knowing, he says, I do not know. Not seeing, he says, I see, right? Or seeing, he says, I do not see. Actually, he's just giving the example, right? So we have to uh, just give him the example. Thus, he consciously speaks falsehood. That is the most important line. Consciously. Volitionally, right? With the motivation. Thus, he consciously speaks falsehood for his own end, for another end, or for some trifling worldly end. So sometimes you may uh, you may use musavara uh, for the benefit of yourself, right? For the benefit of other, and even small amount of only uh, benefit, right? So you will use it uh, consciously speak falsehood, right? I think that is the most important line: consciously. Sometimes. You think that uh, in the um, if you think that you know it right, then you tear. Even though it is not true, it's not musavara, right? Musavara, because uh, you you know that this is the uh, you 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 believe you say that you know it, right? For that reason, you as he consciously speaks falsehood. For his own end. So when I was uh, attending uh, government school, uh, actually my teacher is very uh, angry nature. He is always uh, angry, and he trying to use stick, right? He trying to beat students. He keep homework. Uh, mostly, uh, many students they didn't do their homework. Actually, he is not. He is not asking all the time. Only sometime he ask. Then uh, many students they uh, they cannot they cannot uh, how to say. Huh? They ca yeah they cannot uh, how to say uh, uh, they cannot answer when he ask right. Then he normally tell. For those who do not know the answer, stand up. <laughs> Many students, almost all the students stand up. 
I also do not know the answer. <laughs> but I sit down, do not stand up. <laughs> it's a telling line, it's a telling line, right? By action. By action, right? By action. Actually, I don't know the answer. But I, I think that if he asks, I will, I will answer anyway, right? I will answer anyway. And he, he beat all the students who stand up. <laughs> <laughs> because he is influenced by anger, for he lost his consciousness. For that reason, he even forget uh, to ask the, uh, the students who are sitting down, right? <laughs> That is a telling line, telling line. Actually, you do not, I do not know. I do not know the answer, right? But of course, I know that he, he beat very strongly, he's very, really frightening. So, uh, cannot compare in Singapore context. <laughs> in the village, no complaint, right? But even uh, nowadays, it's different. Cannot beat nowadays. So. If a teacher is beating students, students will complain. So uh, now is uh, now it's very dangerous. But in those times, it is accepted. So he beat with the with the force, right? So I was uh, not knowing the answer. I pretend that I know it, right? So I just is telling line, telling line. <coughs> Consciously, right? Consciously, okay. Please. What happens if you, you don't know, you don't know the answer? As you thought 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 you I do not stand up. By right, I have to stand up, right? Because I do not know. Actually, I do not know. But if you, if you thought your answer is correct, but it's actually a wrong answer, and you said... Oh, it's okay, it's okay, yeah. It's okay. So therefore, volition is very important, right? Or chetana in Pali. So for that reason, before we learn all these karma, right? So we talk about uh, chetana. So the Buddha said that chetana or volition is action, right? But of course, if I think that I can answer, I can answer, uh, I can answer the question, then I sit down, then I give the wrong answer. It's still okay, stay okay. But here, consciously or intentionally, then I sit down, afraid of being afraid of the beating, right? So I think that is a very important, uh, you know, uh, you say that. Uh, the cons on the volition of motivation inside, you know, behind, behind the action. Okay. Here, actually, just this is just an example, right? Any action, any action. If you know, but you you answer, I do not know, right? So if you do not know, you answer, you do not know, right? So actually, telling line, right? Telling line. Any cases? If somebody asks, uh, I here I I I, um, I remember one of the incidences in uh, in, in my monasteries. Uh, we have a uh, sankapiya. You know kapiyas? Yeah, sankapiya in the monasteries. Uh, normally, after the monks and some leader finish, they sit down together. They eat, right? So there is a one very good curry. So one of the kapiya, and he tastes it for a while, and he says, "Oh, very bad, <laughs> <laughs> very bad, and very, uh, very uh, salty like this." He said that. Yeah. Then uh, the other guy uh, forgot to touch that curry. He alone eat it. <laughs> Here, telling lie, right? <laughs> Consciously, he tell lie. The by, by, by saying that, a very, very bad curry, right? Very bad. So the other kapiya, 
do not touch that curry. <laughs> he, uh, he eat that curry alone, right? So there is also a uh, very consciously, right? Consciously. So actually, um, many, many examples, right? Many examples, many examples. <coughs> Telling line uh, regarding in the sodas, the Buddha said that if we possess three qualities, uh, we will, uh, uh, it is li- likely to go to hell, right? As if it brought there. Number one, one speaks falsely, uh, one safe, right? Telling line. I encourage others to do so and approve of speaking falsely. Actually, this is a mention in the sodas. Um, even you encourage others to tell lies, right? To tell lies. In the Arinadana, we discuss about uh, evading tax, right? Like this is a type of telling line, right? Uh, you encourage others to do so, right? It's also not good. And approving speaking falsely. So there is no, uh, there is no, uh, what you call it, there is no, no point to evade, to, to avoid all this one, right? So actually we know our conscience, right? We know our volition and motivation. Firstly, we know for ourselves, right? Telling line is the relation to commit speaking falsehood. So there are four factors to complete musavara. To complete musavara. Number one, falsehood. It is not truth, right? It's not truth. Number two, having a relation to, to deceive others. Just like one, that kabiya, right? He went to deceive other kabiya. He said that that curry is very, very bad, right? He went to uh, volition to deceive other, right? To deceive others. So as a as a businessman, if you want to deceive the customers, right? This one having a volition to deceive others. Number three, making an effect. Number four, accept it as a truth. Find the listener. The listener think that the other kabiya think that this is this curry is very bad, right? So they do not touch that curry. So the one who deceive, he eat alone. So uh, this is a um, acceptor as a truth, right? Find the listener. Find the listener. So this is a uh, that is called four factors to to complete musavara. <clears throat> so please, regarding with the uh, completing of Musavara, please look at page number 207, 207. Uh, the first paragraph. Uh, actually, there are a lot, uh, man, many, many lines. So... Uh, The above passage enumerate the ten and wholesome causes of actions, right? Agusala Kamapata. As shown, three are bodily, four are vave, and three are purely minted. The first seven causes are identified with the volition initiating an effort to accomplish the respected action. Such volition is an and gamma, regardless of whether or not it, com- it completes the action. Here is very important. Such volition is an and gamma, regardless of whether or not it, um, it completes the action. Here, so what you are saying is not truth, right? Number one. Number two, volition to deceive others. Number two. But if you have two, uh, even these two, right? 
Number one and number two, it is considered as Aho Sankama, right? Aho Sankama. You are not making any effect, right? You are not telling lie. But even number one and number two, falsehood and having relation to deceive others. Even number two, two uh, uh, two factors stay consider Aho's and actions, right? Aho's and actions. That's very important to understand. <coughs> Such volition is an Aho's and Gamma, regardless of whether or not it, it completes the action. Here, telling line, right? But if it does reach completion of the action and achieves its aim, so that is the death of intended victim for the killing, right? For the killing. The appropriation of another's property, etc. That is Arinadana, right? Here, uh, uh, acceptance as a truth by the listener, right? Number, number four, right? As a telling line. If the listener accepts it as a truth, right? It is a completion of telling line, according to this. Then, it becomes a full course of action. Here, the very important, full course of action, right? The characteristics of a full course of action is being a karma with the potency to take on the rebirth generating role. That is very important, right? If you are committing full course of telling line, full course of killing, so uh, it is uh, with the potency or potential to take on the rebound generating role, right? So that means uh, it is likely to have a rebound in the awful planes, right? Awful planes. <coughs> that is a to complete a musabara. We, we normally call it you know, completing. I think we should we should use uh, to complete full cause of, right? Or uh, to complete full cause of falsehood, right? To cause of falsehood. I think that's very important, right? Okay, so there are four factors. Even falsehood, number two, having a relation to deceive others. So even number two, one and two is considered as the unwholesome actions, right? But if you make effort, there's another uh, more powerful unwholesome actions. But if the listener take it as the truth, is the full, right? The full cause of unwholesome actions. Laughing, right? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a different degree of unwholesome actions, right? Different de degree of unwholesome actions. So we have to understand in that way. But these are stated in the commentaries, right? Stated in the commentaries, not in the Bali Kana. But of course, in Bali Kana, it's more complete, I think. You cannot speak, you cannot tell lies, number one, by yourself. Number two, no, uh, you don't have to encourage others, right? Sometimes you encourage your children and you are spout, right? Like this. But you are not allowed to prove, right? Approve. Even give your consent, right? Agreement, your agreement. That's considered as a, uh, uh, actually in the Bali Canon, right? Bali Canon. <coughs> Okay, so regarding with the telling line, uh, we normally talk about Ambalatika Raulo Vara Sodas. So in that soda, the Buddha is talking to uh, Samanera Rahula, his son, right? His son. So as you all know that Rahula was ordained as a Samanera at the age of seven years old, right? At the age of seven. Then when the Buddha uh, went to Rajagaha from Kapilavetu to Rajaka, he accompanied the Buddha. And Venera Sari Buddha and Venera Mokulana, so they are his teachers, right? Teachers. And he normally liked to listen to the Dhamma taught by not only 
the Buddha, but also other disciples, right? Is uh, always obedience, and he always listen, ready to listen uh, the admonitions, uh, admonishment of uh, his teachers, right? He's very, uh, very polite, and also uh, uh, how to say, very obedient. For that reason, everyone left uh, Yan Rahula. So in the uh, in the Rajaka, there are a few uh, a few monasteries. Uh, one of them is the Wiluwana, right? Wiluwana monasteries. In uh, in English, we can call it uh, bamboo monasteries, right? There are a lot of bamboo in this country. So that is the place where the Buddha normally stay and uh, give the Dhamma talk to the uh, to the people, right? Um, Normally at the evening, people come and listen to the Dhamma, and uh, the whole monastery was uh, populated, crowded, with the men and people, right? And there is another monastery called Ambalatika. Ambalatika in, uh, in English is the uh, mango, mango grove. So there are a lot of mango, mango trees in that, uh, in that monastery. So, uh, there's a small kuti there. A very quiet, it's away from the people. For that reason, for those, for uh, the men who left quietness and tranquility, the men who want to meditate, they normally go to Ambalatika monasteries, right? So the Buddha normally prays those men who always go to Ambalatika. So those men are very uh, found of tranquility and peace, right? They want to uh, they want to uh, practice the Dharma and they want to practice the meditation, right? Normally the Buddha prays, and other chief disciple of the Buddha also prays. One day, a young Rahula also went there, but in his mind, thinking that. If I go to Ambalatika monasteries and the Buddha and my teachers will praise me. A young Rahula, even though he is very young, he left uh, tranquility, peace, right? Quietness. And he left meditation. Expecting, you know, a uh, praise from his, uh, the Buddha and uh, his teachers, he went to that monasteries. The Buddha knew it. The Buddha knew it. So after lunch, and the Buddha went to Ambalatika monasteries, and go straight to uh, a Kuti, a small monasteries where Yang Raula lived. Before he enter, he have to uh, he have to wash his his feet, right? So on that time. Uh, most of the men not taking slippers, so they, they, they normally go barefoot. So normally uh, at the at the entrance, uh, they keep a water pot and together with a small cap, right? Small verse. Uh, so before enter the uh, uh, ikuti, and the Buddha uh, uh, Venerable Rahula also approach to the Buddha and. and the Buddha, uh, the Buddha take small amount of water into the cap and ask Yan Rahula, Rahula, did you see small amount of water in the cap? Yes, Bandi. Just like that, the man who is always deliberate, deliberately telling lie, consciously telling lie. He doesn't have uh, how do you say, the appearance of the monk and also uh, um, the appear, uh, we cannot call it he has only uh, on a small amount of uh, being a monk right appearance of the monk and also uh, characteristics of a monk and the Buddha throw away that small amount of water Raula, did you see that? There's no water in the cap. And Raula said, yes, Bandi. 
just like that. The man who is consciously telling lie does not have any of any characteristics and gacha or a man. So that me cannot call it man, right? And the Buddha turned down the water cap. Rahula, did you see that? The water cap? Turn it down. Yes, Pandey, just like that. The man who is consciously telling lies does not have any uh, any appearance of the man, right? Cannot say as a man. Then the Buddha uh, turn, turn it back. And the water is empty, right? The water is empty. Rahula, did you see that the water is empty? Just like that, for those who are consciously telling lying, the man who are consciously telling lying, so in his mind, empty, right? No appearance of the man, no man, right? We cannot see as a man. So actually, uh, the Buddha knew that. So, Yang Rahula, he went to deceive his mind. He went to get a present from the Buddha, right? Thinking that if he go to Ambalatika monasteries, he will get, uh, the Buddha will praise him, right? And his teacher also will praise him, expecting, right? Actually, he, uh, he does not have, uh, how to say, the, uh, how to say the desire to go there, he doesn't have actual desire, right? But expecting praise from the Buddha, he went there. <coughs> he pretend, right? That may be telling lie, type of telling lie, very such a one, right? Even that one, type of telling lie. Suppose uh, you don't want to go to monasteries, but uh, if you uh, expect in that, if you go to monasteries, the people will look at you with the admiration, like this, right? Actually, if you if you really don't have any desire to go, but you go, expect in some admiration from parents or family or friends or anyone, right? Like this. But they are sometimes like this, right? So that, that is considered as a type of telling line, right? Telling line. So here, the Buddha want to point out how to say the danger of telling line to Yan Rahula. Rahula is just seven years old, right? For that reason, the Buddha used a very simple simile, right? Then the Buddha said this one, Rahula, when one is not ashamed to tear a deliberate line, there is no evil, I say that one would not do. Telling line, how serious it is, very serious one, right? If somebody is telling line, not ashamed to tell line, so there is no evil deed, I say, the Buddha said that, that one would not do. Therefore, Rahula, you should train this. I will not utter a falsehood, even as a joke. <laughs> even as a joke, right? <laughs> Some people want to tear, tear a line, you know, to tear a joke, right? To tear a joke. Actually, we, we have learned this one uh, when, uh, in the last year, right? Last year. Even I talk about one of my friends. My friend always uh, cracked joke. Of course, when I was very young, I, I went to listen what he said. He intentionally and he happily tell lie, hoping that uh, the listener will laugh at him. Right? Uh, the listener was very happy to listen to his joke. But uh, what he said is not truth. Not truth. Then, uh, when I think about right now, I think I lost my trust on him. Whatever he said in my mind, I register in my mind, it's not truth. <laughs> no, what I mean is, uh, 
whatever he said. So I have to, I have to listen with the cautious, cautious, cautiously. Whether it is truth, whether it is wrong, mostly I register in his uh, his image. So it's not reliable. Normally he tell lie. He uh, like this, like this, right? But of course, he's very good to uh, to to uh, to his friend. But anyway, by uh, telling lie, even as a joke, right? You will lose your your trust. It's very important for those who are trustworthy. They do, they do not even tell lie, even as a joke, right? They are serious. For that reason, people uh, trust trust them. Uh, people have a confidence in them, right? Confidence in them. That's very important. Even as a joke, right? <laughs> but don't worry, it's not for mank. Uh, it, it's not for late activities. <laughs> It is, it is for monks, right? It is, the voice talking to the monks, right? Talking to the monks. But of course, if you can follow, if you can follow, uh, it is good. What I want to say is, uh, we should avoid telling lines. Very serious, right? Very serious. Normally, for those who, uh, who, who are not ashamed to tell lines, and they can they can easily do other angles and actions as well, right? That's very important. And then while you are listening, you may uh, you may have a, the idea of white line, right? White line. I think many of you have it. Later, I will, I will explain that uh, white line, right? So what is the white line and how how to deal with this, right? How to deal with it? The result of telling line, fault speech, <coughs> repeatedly pursue is very important, right? Developed and cultivated is conducive to awful planes. For one who was born as a human being, oh, sorry, <laughs> falsehood, no, no, not, not stealing, right? Uh, telling a uh, false speech at minimum conduce to false accusation, false accusation. So they will accuse you, right? False accusation. Most importantly, uh, normally when we explain about five precepts, telling line, that is the hours and actions. By telling line, you lose your reputation. You lose your trust, right? I think that's very important. <coughs> okay. So that is the result of telling line. The next one is the slandering. Pisunavacha. Slandering. This is also uh, a very serious vava action. Let's look at uh, what the Buddha talk, right? What the Buddha talk. He speaks divisively. Uh, di divisively. divisively. Happy heart something here, here, he repeats it as well, at home or other places, right? In order to divide, that's very important, that's a, that is a uh, volition, right? Motivation. In order to divide from this, that means you hear some new from Mangala Vihara, that you don't like the people from, uh, in these monasteries, then you, uh, you repeat, you repeat what you heard here to other place, right? So thinking that, so the people in that place, and uh, the people in Mangala Vihara, and they will be divided. They will no longer left, right? They will become enemy. So keeping in this mind, and you. Uh, you repeat it. You you talk. You talk, you you explain it, right? So that is the <coughs> slandering. Having heard something as well, he repeats it to those people in order to divide them from those. So you you heard something from outside, 
then you either you uh, you give that message to the people here, thinking that so they will become enemy, they will divide, right? They will divide. So I think uh, this is the way Bali Ganon describes sometimes, right? So I think uh, of course uh, the user is not very clear. Uh, how to say? A little bit archaic, right? A little bit archaic. Thus, he is one who divides those who are united. Actually, people must be united. Between two people, and between two groups, and between two nations, right? Two nations. So, he is the one who divides those who are united. <coughs> and two countries are united. Two, associ uh, two associations are united. Two monasteries are very close. Two people are very united and very close, right? And he slander, right? So in this way, he divides those people. He create creator observations, one who enjoy fashion. Actually, many people, some people, sorry, not, not, not many people. Some people, they like fashions, right? So they don't like people are united, right? They don't like people left each other. So they want to divide. So in this way, they became very powerful, right? Many nations are doing like this. It's really powerful nations, right? Just like the United States. So he trying to divide, right? Uh, two races and two nations and two groups, right? And the, uh, the military and insurgents, right? Trying to divide. So that is the nature of slandering, right? So, who enjoy fash uh, fashions? That is very important. Even in our mind, you know, even it could be bad. If you are enemy, uh, you are enemy, the, no, not enemy, the one you do not like, uh, it's not okay with the other guy or other, 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 other girl, right? In our mind, we like it, right? We like it. Who enjoy fashions, fashions, right? Who enjoy fashions? Of course, that is the OSND, not a slandering. Only we use speeches. It will be slandering, right? But if we like it, right? If we are happy by looking at uh, division between two people that we do not like, right? So that we can uh, uh, actions, right? Unwholesome actions. Rejoice in fashions. Delight in fashions. Speak out of words that create fashion. <coughs> that create fashions. So we have to uh, control our speeches, not to speak. Even it is truth, right? Sometimes what you heart is truth, but that speech will create division between two people and between two groups, between two nations. So we have to control your speeches. If you cannot, that becomes slandering, right? Sometimes, some people do it habitually because they don't have a mindfulness, full of ignorance, they do it. Even though they may say that they don't have intention, right? But it's considered as a slandering. But of course, out of, out of uh, ignorance, not out of anger, right? Not out of greed. Actually here, Pisuna Vacha. Pisuna Vacha. So Pisuna can be divided into three wa. Pia. Pia means the one uh, people are uh, people left each other, right? Pia. Left. Uh, sonya. Sonya means empty. Empty. Karana means doing. Doing uh, the left empty. So that means two people love each other. You create scarcity among those, uh, those two people. So in that way, the left between these two people became empty. Right? So that is a, uh, the lit, uh, the mean, another meaning in the uh, commentaries. It's very beautiful word. Very beautiful. Maybe I, I will write down. Actually, uh, 
slandering. Sorry. In Pali is pisuna. So that is a Pali word. So uh, we can divide this Pali word into three. P, Su, Na, right? P, Mi, Pia. Pia is a uh, left or a fashion. <coughs> uh, Su, Mi, So, Nya. So, Nya, Mi. Empty. Empty. Uh, Nami Karana. Doing. So that is a uh, very beautiful uh, definition of the commentary. The commentary said that. Uh, by slandering, you do uh, the left between to be bare empty. You make the left between to be bare empty. Empty, right? By slandering, because of your actions, left or affection between to be bare, between two society. Um, between two nations became empty, right? So that is a, a very beautiful definition. Some people, they slander, hoping that they will get, they will get left from one person, right? By using slander, uh, slandering speeches, right? So sometimes because of greed. So sometimes you slander because of anger, right? You don't like them, they love each other, right? Then you create, you create, uh, how to say, the schism, right? You, you, you create a plan, right? To divide those people. So that is slandering. So I think that is very important. Whatever method you use, right? If the lab between these, uh, these people became empty, that is slandering, right? Slandering. So we have to look at our mind, right? We have to look at our mind. So really normally we are doing some time, right? Some time. But if you are doing many times, repeatedly pursue. <laughs> Not very good, right? Not very good. Not very good. Okay. That's human nature, right? So that is called Vave Aishin. I was in Vave Aishin, right? I was in Vave Aishin. <coughs> Slandering is the violation to make division among people or group or nation or association using malicious speeches. Malicious speeches, right? It divided, it became a full cause of action. I will say that full cause of action. In Pali, we call it Kamapata, right? Kamapata which give rise to a grave effect. According to this book, rebut generating effect, right? Rebut generating effect. Even if not divided, we can call it stay and hold and action. In Bali, we, they call it docherida. Docherida. Actually, uh, and Hosan, uh, Akusala, Kamapata, and Docharita are the same, but the commentary want to differentiate between two and Hosan actions, right? So if, because of your speeches, if two people are divided, two people are divided, so it became a full cause of actions. Akusala, Kamapata, right? But if, even though you use slander and speeches, they still love each other, no division between those two people, it is unwholesome actions, but 
นอกกรรมปัจจัย right our own actions not กรรมปัจจัย is called d o c h a r i d a right called d o c h a r i d a so we have to differentiate between กรรมปัจจัย and d o c h a r i d a right actually they are the same <laughs> they are the same right and d o c h a r i d a so that the Buddha said clearly said that the same thing right the same thing Okay, question. So, like saying, uh, you can have a slender, some c a n d y tails, you can tell, maybe there are two good friends, right? So, then I tell um, one friend, oh, so, okay, there's A and B for very good friends. They are jealous, right? So, I run to tell A, A and B said something bad about you. Yeah. m i n d now we mindless mindless oh because I can't control my mind oh yeah 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 Slip, slip all the time, or slip all the time, man. Ah, used to it. It should be dochariita, yeah. It's not k a m a p a t a but of course, is the uh, it is what commentary you the what. It is the if to be bare not divided. It's stick and also indeed, right? Whether you are you are talking, you are slandering out of hatred, or out of greed, or out of ignorance, right? So if you are talking, some people are not mindful. So they used to it, right? They do not think such uh, such a speeches will not create any problem, right? So they they just they just speak slip all the time, right? Slip all the time. But of course, even such a slip all the time, the speeches create a very big problem, right? For that reason, we have to control, right? Something that create uh, fashion or division between two people, right? So for that reason, the wisdom is very important, right? Wisdom is very important. So here, there are four factor to complete slandering. Number one, people who are united, two kape, right? One kape, so they love each other. Having a relation to divide other people and acquire love or friendship for oneself. Here, I need two characteristic. Number one. Want to divide uh, that cafe, right? So you want to divide that cafe. That uh, you tell the lady, hoping that the lady will f e t h e r with her husband and will will let me like this, right? So if I have a, such a malicious intention, so it will be both, right? The volition to divide other people and acquire love or friendship for oneself, right? Sometimes you want to divide two people, hoping that so the other one will love you, right? Between three nations, right? One nation use slandering speeches, then hoping that uh, two country who are very close relationship will be divided, right? So the other one, one of them will approach very close to him, hoping that right, use a divisive speeches. 
That's very important. That's normally doing, right? The countries are doing. Uh, that is, uh, normally the military are doing, right? Even in the um, in the uh, Mahaprabhu Banasota, right? So the Osakara, the Prime Minister of Magadha Kingdom, right? And he pretend that he was exiled from Magadha, right? And he uh, went to Vesali and create a lot of, lot, lot of division, right? So actually the, uh, the people in the Vesali are very uh, united. So he go there and create a lot of division, a lot of factions, a lot of schism, right? So they no longer have a unity among themselves. So by that time, the Magara King easily, uh, easily evade, invade, right? Invade the Vesali. So once and for all, because of uh, uh, division, uh, how do you say, slandering speeches of the uh, Osakara. Osakara is the prime minister of uh, Magadha Kingdom, right? So if you want to know, you can read Mahaprabhu Sauta, right? So that is a happen evolution to divide other people, acquire left friendship from one side. Even one and two, it is considered as the unwholesome actions, right? Unwholesome actions. Number one, okay. <laughs> Number one, they are united, it's okay, right? But here, relation to divide, right? To create factions. And also one to acquire love and friendship for oneself, right? It happens everywhere, right? It happens everywhere. We have to look at how to see our mind very closely. The making an effort was, right? Very bad. Making an effort. Using speeches, learning speeches. Being understood by the listener. The, the, the listener understand, right? What he is talking, right? Sometimes the listener do not understand what you are saying and do not know your intention, right? I think it is a, not a city, uh, not not a completion of slandering, right? Only the listener understood, then it is a completion of Pisunavasa, right? Pisunavasa. So here, the most important thing is, you have relation, you make an effort, right? There's only two, important one. Important one. In the Vinaya uh normally only two. You have relation or motivation to commit wrongdoings, and number two, making an effort, right? Making an effort. Suppose you want to uh, you want to see uh, this uh, this handful, right? Put in somewhere else, and you touch it. Intention was stealing, right? When you touch, so you uh, you commit the thought uh, serious wrongdoings. So when you move that uh, handful then you are parajika. If this is a uh, more than valuable, uh, more valuable, right? Uh, if it is a uh, uh, valuable, uh, good, valuable object, in a state in the Vinaya Pireka, so you begin parajika, right? A very subtle one. Volition to steal, and you make a, uh, you uh, make an effect, right? Make an effect. Even just moving, right? Then that is a committing uh, wrongdoing. Any question? Okay, no question. Let's go. Next one. Next one is a hard speech. <laughs> hard speech. Fruzavasa. Normally, when we are learning four unwholesome verbal speeches, we take only the first word, right? Right? The first word. Just like a killing, right? We just take it just killing. Actually, when we look at uh, what the Buddha said, not only killing, but also harming, right? Other people. Slashing other people. So we have to understand in that way, right? So this is a very authentic talk in the soul, right? Hard speech. He speaks harshly. Some people are very rough, eh? Very rude. <laughs> he, 
He utters such words as are rough, hard, and harmful to others. Offensive, right? Offensive to others. Bordering on anger. And conducive to concentrations. Here, very important. Bordering on anger. So because of anger, so you are using offensive speeches and harmful to others. Even what you say is very pleasant, if it is offensive to other people, we can consider as a prusavasa, right? Prusavasa. It's very important, very important. Sometimes we are writing very politely, right? But, uh, how do you say, it attack to other people, right? Weakness, other people weakness, right? Other people weakness. That's also considered as a hard speech. Normally, uh, in the social media, if you are cursing and if you are insulting other people by testing, it's also considered uh, variations, right? We are talking in general, right? Hard speech. Some people are insulting, right? Some people are cursing in the social media. Even though they are using their body by typing, it's considered as a verbal action. We are talking in general. So this is a, uh, a type of hard speech, right? But in, uh, in uh, Facebook, the uh, social media, they use hate speech, right? So that... Uh, they are monitoring hate speeches. Actually, in the social media, we are not talking, right? We are typing, but they still use hate speech. So this is, this is the nature of uh, public speeches, right? Public actions. So even though we are typing by way of email or social media, in the social media, they still consider as the public actions, right? Because we are talking in general. <coughs> Bordering on anger and also unconducive to concentrations. So in your office, if your boss is shouting and cursing to the workers, so the worker cannot concentrate their work, right? Unconducive to concentrations. So they cannot concentrate, they cannot focus their work. So why the boy is shouting, right? using a lot of offensive words, right? So, it, will, uh, it is not unconducive to concentrations. Hard speech is the relation to speak unkind, offensive, unpleasant, insulting and cruel speeches. So there are three factors to complete. Three factors. Being angry must be anger. Anger is behind. Anger is behind the you know, uh, uh, the hard speech. <clears throat> Number two, being a passing must be a passing. If you are cursing a tree, it's not a hard <laughs> speech. <laughs> it's not a hard speech. No, that's a, what commentary said. I have to explain. <laughs> Using hard speech, right? Here, I think three characteristics are not very, not very, I want to say, very good. Anyway, here we are using hard speech with anger. The most important is anger, right? Anger. Not through Savasa, commentary said that even though the speeches are pleasant to hear, very pleasant to hear. If the volition is cruel and unkind, it is considered as a prusavacha. So one of the uh, one of the kind, you know, the uh, how to say um, the robber, you know, they they, 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 they capture how to say, they, they capture one person and uh, tore his uh, his man uh, let him sleep where? 
right? He, he see nicely, let him sleep well. That means uh, the man, they understand that. So their boss uh, order them to kill that person, right? Let him sleep well, right? So even though the way he talks is very polite and very pleasing, very uh, not rough, not, not offensive, is consider stay consider as a fruzawaja, right? Here intention is to kill the person, right? To kill the person. So actually especially in the um, in the movie, so there are many scenes like this, right? Uh, how do you say the the leader of the gang, right? So they normally say very nicely, very calmly, right? Let's in rest, right? Like this. So so that means he is ordering the man to kill, right? The bouncing. Even though what you said is uh, very pleasant and very polite, so if the volition is cruel and unkind, it is considered as if the watcha, right? Hard speeches by teachers and parents are not through the watcha. If they are doing with the good way, but here, with the good way me, without anger. That's very important, right? But if you are yelling at to your children, if you are shouting, if you are threatening to your children, out of anger, that is through the watcher, right? But sometimes, you love your children, you know that if they go this way, so they will, uh, they will be dangerous, right? They will find a danger, a very dangerous path. Then you told them, but they do not listen. You threaten them without anger, right? So even though you're using a very offensive word, but in your mind there's no anger. The commentary said that it's not considered as a fruza watcher, right? Fruza watcher. So I don't know in uh, an English, but in Burmese we we normally use krunadoso, uh, uh, krunadosa. So if the teachers or the parents are shouting and using very hard speeches to their children, to their pupils, and they normally use grunadoso, out of compassion, they show their anger. <laughs> but it's not true. According to Abhidharma, the Karuna and Dosa will not go hand in hand, right? If there is compassion in your heart, there's no anger. If there is no, if, if there is anger in your mind, there is no compassion, right? For that reason, that grunadosa, actually in, in Bami, grunadosa, not in according with uh, Bodhisattva, right? Bodhisattva. If we, um, if we, if we study between um, on association, right? Association between uh, consciousness and mental factor, right? So uh, compassion and anger will not go together, right? They go against. So here, here is without anger, that is very important. Without anger, sometimes you will use very hard speeches uh, for the benefit of your children, right? For the benefit of your, your, your pupil. So here, Abstinent from hard speech, it's very beautiful. For that reason, I just take it from the soda. <clears throat> Having abandoned hard speech, he abstained from hard speech. He speaks such words as are gentle. If you are gentle, it is a good deed, right? It is good deed. Pleasing to the ear. Some people are very polite, very gentle. So whatever they say is very, how to say, uh, um, pleasing to the ear, right? Pleasing to the ear. So uh, one of the devotee in the, told me on the Bainapada day, last Bainapada day, and he said that he wished for, after puja, he wished for me. Today your face is very, I want to say uh, pleasant and very. Uh, you are. He said, "Your smile is very authentic." 
<laughs> Maybe the other day my smile may not be authentic. <laughs> it implied. <laughs> Anyway, it's very pleasant, very pleasant to, uh, pleasant to the ear, right? Today your smile is very authentic. He said that. Huh? I, th- I think that, I mean, as if, if I'm not missing like this, he's talking about smile, right? Maybe the other day not, not authentic. <laughs> but of course, actually, um, we cannot give authentic smile all the time, right? Sometimes our smile may not be authentic. Uh, as a Buddhist man, um, whenever uh, the devotee came in, we have to smile. <laughs> so I think that is the, uh, one of our duty, I think, mean, right? Duty. Of course, people left smile, right? So whether you like or you don't like, sometimes even you don't like that person, still have to smile, right? <laughs> but that smile may not be authentic. <laughs> so anyway, we need effect, right? Smiling, not really easy, right? So to smile, we need to make some effect, right? So maybe because of uh, condition, maybe uh, he said that uh, normally he's very polite, gentleman, and he wished for me, today you are smiling very authentic. <laughs> you know, pleasing to the ear, right? What I, what I want to say is, uh, if you can say such a word, very good, right? It is good deed. If you are gentle, if you are talking pleasant speeches, it is a good deed. And laugh away. And as go to the heart. Here, very important. Hadi Yengama is go to the heart, right? So such a word, go to in my heart. <laughs> it register right away, right? Normally, uh, according to science, uh, we need to hear 28 times to register in our heart. But only one time he said, <laughs> it register, right? <laughs> because of pleasant, right? Pleasant to the ear, Let's go to the heart. Are uh, courteous and desired by many. Many people like, right? Pleasant speeches. And many people like spine, right? Desired by many and agreeable to many. They like it, right? They like it. So that is the, um, um, the characteristics of the abstinence from heart speech. Very beautiful, right? That's what the Buddha said. Not easy to talk pleasant speeches, right? That go to the heart, right? That go to the heart. But of course, sometimes it may not be authentic. But of course, if 25% stay okay. <laughs> but if you are talking pleasant speeches, or talk greed, right? Expecting something. You are handsome, you are beautiful, but not since you are here. Want to get something, right? It's also not good, not good, right? It's a type of telling line, right? Type of telling line. Even though you are talking good things, but it's not sincere in your mind, right? It's also not good. People can read your mind. People can read between the lines. Huh? <laughs> between the lines. Very important. I think. Okay, any question? Usually, no question this time. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's close our... Uh, okay. Go back, okay. Which one? Oh, this one? Peru Cha Hua. Oh, yeah, yeah. This one? You mean? Oh, this one, this one, yeah. Sa, sa, yeah. Okay, wait, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, any any uh, announcement? Or come in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Announcement. Very good topic. Actually, I, I explain, I don't know whether in the soda class or here, connecting the Dhamma dog, right? 
you all are learning different cl- different places, right? And under the different teachers, so you're trying to connect them with dogs, right? One day, you'll be able to see a full pictures, right? Or the dharma, then uh, there's no confusion, there's no doubt about them, right? I think it's important to very good topic. I don't know whether uh, what what she's covering in that concept. But what I understand is connecting the Dhamma to me, trying to understand overall teachings of the Buddha, right? By connecting different uh, information that you learn from different teachers, right? Okay. Yo vada tam bhava ro manu jesu Sakyamu ni bhagavakata kecho Bharakato bhala samangi Tansu katan sarana tamu pemi Raga vi raga manin jama sokan Dhamma ma sangata ma pati kulam Madura mi mambagu nansu vipatam Dhamma mi mansarana tamu pemi Yatacha de nama apalamahu Chattu su su si su puri sayu gesu Atacha pogala dhammata sati Sangami mansarana tamu pemi Satu, satu, satu Thank you everyone